Hey guys, this is Blake Kitchens with Hound Hogs Barbecue, and today I'm going to teach you how to cook an SCA competition steak. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what we've got on the table here. All these rubs and spices you can get at houndhogsbbqsupply.com. That's our company, it really helps us out if you support us. Um, and any tools and equipment we use is likely down in the description that you can find on Amazon or other retailers. Uh, but come on in, let me show you why I picked the steak I picked and we're gonna trim it up. All right, so if you take a look at this steak, the first thing that I see is it's got a really nice big spinalis. Now this is actually pretty close to what I would pick off of a table uh, because I like this little muscle right here this is called the tri-heart. I like for that to be about the size of a nickel or a quarter or somewhere in there. Um, but we're gonna get this thing trimmed up. The first thing we're gonna do is all of this fat band and silver skin on the outside, we're actually gonna take all of that off. It's useless. Um, I wanna make sure that I get a nice clean trim on the back end. First things first, people used to argue about this. They don't so much anymore. I'm gonna take this tail off right here. It's useless. It's not a part of the ribeye. That's always the first cut I make, and then I'm just gonna keep working my way around because all this fat on the presentation half is not doing anything for me. The only thing it might do is end up charring, and that's not what I want. So I'll round this off a little bit, and I'm gonna continue all the way around the steak because you see this, that's not a good bite. I might enjoy eating that at home, but that's a really thick piece of fat right on the edge of the spinalis. That's not the first thing I want the judges to taste. So I'm actually gonna shave it down all the way around. You wanna take off a little at a time. Got a little bit of a butcher's cut here, but that's okay. Judges probably won't notice, especially the judges today. All right, so here's the big cut. Some of you guys will probably hit me in the comments for this. I used to trim like I was really like intimidated by it. Um, all I need is five bites. They take a bite about the size of the end of your thumb. So I got one, two, three, four, five. I got way more than five bites in here. I don't want this to be their first bite. And I don't want this to be on my presentation half. And so what I want you guys to think about as we're going through this video today is we're going to play to the rules of the game. I would eat this steak just like this at home, but when I'm talking about $1,000 in first place on the line, I don't want to even give the judge the option to make that their first bite. And so watch this cut. I'm gonna find my spot right here and right there, and I'm gonna do this. Oh, it's looking like a New York strip now, don't it? And that's okay, because again, I'm playing to the game. Take this little edge off right here. Now there are guys out there that would take this fat pocket out, and you could do that. I don't feel that it's necessary. I just need a good steak that I can get a good spot on for appearance, which would be this half, and a good tasting half. And so, to you guys, I'm probably gonna shoot for turning it in, something like that. You can kind of form it and shape it a little bit. You obviously don't wanna put too much pressure on it, um, but you wanna kind of get an idea, and I'm gonna go over the judging at the end, but if they're only gonna judge appearance on this half, then I wanna make sure that I've got the best looking part of the steak on this side. And you see, this has got a little corner, so all I'm gonna do is just round that off. There we have our nicely trimmed SCA steak. Everybody does things a little bit differently. The number one tip I can give you for pinning and tying is if you're gonna use toothpicks or you're gonna use metal skewers, use the same number of toothpicks every time. My number is eight. I'm gonna use the same number no matter what the steak looks like, even if I don't need another toothpick because I'm gonna practice how I play, I'm going to use eight toothpicks every single time. And honestly guys, some folks use the metal skewers. They say that they're less likely to break off. I've never had issues with them breaking off. All right, so now I got my butcher twine. Everybody ties differently. The biggest thing is this butcher twine is gonna kind of keep your steak together, but you don't wanna squeeze it too tight or it'll make it cup up like a bowl. So just going in here. You can see how many times I've tied these things. That was just like, you know, quick muscle memory. We're gonna tie it off. You see, I'm just gonna pull it just tight enough to snug it. And then I always leave about two inches of string so that I can see it when I go to box. All right, so before you put it in your liquid tenderizer, uh, you're gonna wanna do some mechanical tenderizing. You can use whatever you want, as long as it's pointy and sharp. Fork, a hair pick, you know, this I just happen to have in my drawer. Um, and all you're gonna do is just give that marinade an extra route into the meat itself. So just a little gentle pokes. We're not gonna overdo it because you don't wanna turn in a mushy steak. If you end up with a promoter who gives you a select cut, very little marbling, then you might wanna do it a little harder. But you can see this side, the presentation looks nowhere near as good as the other side, 
which is why I chose to keep it this side up while I was trimming. I don't care about what the other side looks like. So that's all we're gonna do for the tenderizing. All right, so let's get the steak kind of moved out of the way for a second. Um, we're gonna go into marinades. Now, there's a lot of different marinades out there. Probably the three most popular are Wicked Pig, Moo Magic, and DB180. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our foil pan here. And I actually, I've used Wicked Pig in the past. It's really good stuff. It's actually really fast at tenderizing, so you marinate about half the time as you do others. Um, but I've recently found success mixing these two, half and half, so I do about an eighth of a cup of each. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix it with 16 ounces of beef stock or beef broth. Don't use consomme, I've used consomme in the past. Consomme is really nice because it's rich in flavor, but if it's a little bit cool outside, it's gonna gel up and you're gonna have a hard time mixing it. And so, we got these cool Voltrix um, mixers. They're electric and so they're rechargeable. So we're gonna get these mixed up, an eighth of a cup of each, mix it with 16 ounces, and we're gonna let this thing mix on high for about three minutes. All right, so let's let this sit. We're gonna flip it in 15 minutes. We're gonna do 15 minutes per side. Let's let it sit here for about 30 minutes and we'll be back. All right, so we got this thing out of the marinade. It's time to get this thing seasoned up. Now, I know this looks like a lot and this may be more than you would do at home for your just backyard cooking steak, uh, but everything's got a purpose here. So the first thing we're gonna put on is John Lindsay's All Cued Up Steak Shake. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is probably the number one used rub in my house. Um, I put it on everything and it's always my first layer on a steak because it's not overly salty, it gets that meat sweating and gets those savory flavors started. The next thing we're gonna go on with is gonna be Pit of Heaven Steakhouse Pit Grit. This is pretty fine, it's got a very beefy flavor and so the point in this is not for salt but it's to enhance the beefiness of the steak. It's gonna do really well for that. And then the third thing, Hotty Toddy Barbecue Cruise 38 Special. This is where my salt content comes from. This is probably the saltiest rub I've got on the table. And so I use this to give me that extra pop because typically in competition cooking, you want a little bit extra salt. You don't want a lot, just a touch more salt because you got to think they might have tasted 20 steaks before yours. And then after that, the DB180 Steak and Beef, this is what I would call my flavor pop rub. This one has got a lot of chilies, very earthy flavored. It's got a lot of pop, extra black pepper in there. I really like it as just a touch of spice. And so this is what I kind of finish it off with to really just set that flavor apart. You know, recently at the beginning of this year, a friend of ours, Marty Plute, he, uh, he decided to come out with a rub and it's called Twisted Steel Steak Appeal. Now this rub's a little bit different. I'm not gonna put this on right now. I'm gonna use this as a resting rub, which is what it was designed for. And when it goes into the wrap to rest, I'm gonna use this finishing dust grinder and I'm gonna grind a little bit on the spinalis and let it sweat into the meat while it's resting. And so that's, how, that's all we're gonna put on here. We're gonna start the whole thing off with a little bit of Wilson Shire from uh, Sweet Swine of Mine and Joe Wilson. Um, this is gonna get that surface moist and let those rubs start sweating in. And uh, then we're gonna get this thing on the grill. I want you guys to think about is how you're going to turn this in. They're never going to taste this half, okay? 
And so I don't want you putting a whole lot of rub on that half. I want you to go heavier on the spinalis and less on the actual uh, eye of the ribeye. And so I've already got my first layer steak shake on there. And I'm actually gonna put the steakhouse all the way over it, but I'm gonna just go a little bit lighter on the back end and a little bit heavier on the front. And then we can just kind of pat it in. There's a lot of moisture coming out of the steak. That's that salt working into the meat. And so that's probably all I'm gonna put in this section right here. Um, I put everything all over the back and on the front. I put most of my flavor rubs just on the top or on the spinalis. So now we'll just kind of hit it again. Just a little bit of pop right there. Always pat it in, don't rub it because it's gonna soak in. You don't wanna wipe it off basically. I definitely would not put this DB180 on the presentation half because since it's a little coarser, it tends to burn a little easier. So this is our steak ready to go on the grill. Um, we've got everything sweated in. You can wait however long you need to. On colder days, it's gonna take a little bit longer, um, but it's gonna turn out really good. I'm really happy and I'm gonna show you a really good trick to make sure you get the best presentation you can. Ready for this? All right, so let's get this thing on the grill. Now we've got our grill running about 550 to 600 degrees. That's typically what I like to shoot for. Um, if I'm at 550, I may go a minute 30. If I'm at 600, I may go a minute 15. So I'm gonna vary anywhere in between there depending on how my grill's running at that very moment. Um, so we're gonna get this thing open. Like I said, I always take this off, set it off to the side. And this is probably the most important tip that you'll get out of this video. It has really saved my butt a couple times on appearance. When you're about to put your steak on, don't just press it on. Find the spot that you don't want the judges to see. You don't want a grill mark on top of fat because it's likely to char. And so I'm actually gonna position my grill grate spatula like that because I'm gonna cover up this fat seam. And when I do, and I flip it over, now I know that my grill grates are not going to hit right on top of that. Let me spray my grill. Place it on there, pull it out from under it, give it a little press and drop your weight on there. We're gonna go about a minute 20. All right, let's take a look. Set our weight off to the side. All right, take it, flip it back over. You see how when you get that grill mark in there, it's gonna char? Now, luckily that's below my presentation half because this is gonna be my line. So all I'm worried about is that section right there. I'm gonna find me a good spot to put my grill marks. You gotta be, it really takes some practice to be able to flip it over like that. I've done it a lot of times, so I'm not too worried about it. We're just gonna set her down. It is running a little hot right now, probably about 600 degrees. So we're gonna do a minute 15. Now here's the thing. I don't actually check my grill grate temperature in mid cook because I don't need to. I've run this grill so many times, I know what it's gonna do once the steak gets on there. Typically it's gonna cool down a little bit, but since it was running hot and I hadn't started to choke it down, I went ahead and climbed up to about 600 degrees. I'm gonna adjust my times accordingly. That's one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you is if your grill gets off temperature a little bit, a little high, a little low, don't freak out, just adjust. You can still get the same grill marks if you add five seconds or take away five seconds, depending on how your grill's running. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, nice and clean. Just a little bit of rub left on there, no sticking. Let's see what she looks like. Oh yeah. All right, so here's what I want you to imagine. If I turn it in like this, I don't finish out my grill mark right there, but that's okay. I've actually gotten 50s with that. And so, but you see how I protected most of this fat from getting too bad by using that grill mark trick. Now here, let's do the other side. Let's go ahead and get it on. Here's a tip that I'll tell you real quick. Um, usually between my third and fourth turn, I always take a temp. 
because you never know, maybe my steak was warmer than I expected or uh, maybe it was cooler than I expected and I'm running behind. So I always get a little bit of a probe in between turn three and turn four before I go indirect. So I want you to notice something, look at this side. Which side do you think the grill marks look better, this one or this one? These got a little wavy on me because I put too much weight on it and then it didn't finish right there. I usually, if it turns out perfect, I don't even put a weight when I'm doing the backside. But since I knew that it wasn't exactly what I wanted, I'm using my backside just as a backup. So remember in between my third and fourth turn, I like to get a temp. I'm gonna check it. I'm at 111, which means I'm a little ahead of schedule. So I'm gonna know that I'm gonna need to take this thing off and get it indirect pretty quickly. I'm, if, if I wasn't already doing a minute and 15, I would probably drop my time by a little bit. All right, so we're about to indirect. I'm gonna get my riser over here after it's cooled off. And I'm much happier with this appearance than I am, than I am that one. And so this is gonna be the side I'm gonna use. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the Thermalworks needle probe connected to the dot. This is what we've been using recently. You can see how little that is. It's the perfect length and thickness to run it right up in the middle of your stake and keep an eye on the doneness temperature. All right, so we've hit 136. We're gonna leave our thermometer in there. I'm gonna put this thing in a foil pouch and I wanna watch it rise to somewhere around 141 degrees today. So we're just gonna drop it in here. And just get it wrapped up pretty tight and let it sit. And while we wait, we're gonna get ready for boxing. All right, so let me go ahead and get ahead of this. Uh, you'll notice here in just a second, all of a sudden my fence disappears and my grass turns really green. Um, these are two different videos because we shot one, realized after the fact during editing that there were some technical issues that couldn't be overcome. So we had to reshoot part of the video and piece it all together. Uh, still should be helpful though. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that not only the part that we just went through is good to help you learn how to cook an SCA steak, but that this judging section really helps. Well, we're done, steak's right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the judging process so when you go to box, you got to keep in mind how it's going to be judged. What we like to do is we don't like a big bunch of moisture pooling on our steak because it kind of makes our grill marks look bad. Just kind of tap it. You don't want to dry it out, but you don't want this to make your grill marks look bad. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I would box this. We're only judging the top half for appearance. We'll go into that more in just a minute. And so this is exactly how I'm going to put it in there. I don't want to turn it that way. I don't want to turn it that way. That's a very specific way. Actually, I'm going to go like that. And the reason why is because when they get to the judging, they're going to open it. They're going to take their knife and they're going to find the 50% mark on the stake and they're going to give it a cut. And they're going to slide your stake to the side and then that's how it's going to go to the table. What the judges are going to do, this box will be closed. They are going to get the box and I'm going to do it in this camera so you can see it like you're the judge, okay? They're going to get the box. They're going to open it. They're going to look here and they're going to judge appearance. Okay. That's the first thing they're going to do. And so they're going to look, are your marks consistent? Does it look good? Does it look appetizing? It does not have to have grill marks. If it's got a sear, is it an even sear? And then they're going to look right here and they're going to see your doneness. Now, if you'll notice, that's a pretty good doneness right there. You got basically a warm pink center. Actually, the picture uh, that the SCA has for their judging card has a, a light gray band around it. The goal is not to hit what you think is a perfect medium. The goal is, does this look like the picture that the judges have? They're going to write down those two scores. They're going to open it again. Now, I'm going to kind of turn it a little bit. So this is facing the judge. They're going to take a plastic fork and a plastic knife and whatever side they want to start on, the first judge will start on whichever side they choose. They're going to cut. See, that's a decent size bite, not much bigger than the end of my thumb. And then they're going to take it. They're going to taste it. They're going to throw away their fork and their knife. They write down their texture, their taste, and their overall impression score. Slide it to the next one. My turn? Yeah, I think it's good. All right, Zach, go through the process. What's your appearance? No, you're not supposed to pick it up to look at the appearance. I'm just kidding. You wouldn't have a glare on it like we have right now. You guys can't see. Uh, I'd probably give it a 49. Okay, of course. <laughs> All right. And then we've already gone over done this. I really did like the texture on this one. Um, I, I, of course, I got a good bite. I had no fat pockets or anything, so they closed the box. And then and they taste. You got to throw the fork too. Not too chewy, not too mushy. Mm -mm. I feel like that was actually a really good steak. No, that was really good steak. I would be really happy to turn that in any day.
Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so guys, that is kind of the basics of how to cook an SCA steak, uh, a peek inside the judging tent uh, to see how exactly it's judged. That's one thing that throws people off all the time is that they think that the judge sees the whole steak and judges appearance on the whole steak. They don't. If you're judging appearance off that, how do you judge appearance off that? It looks like trash. You can't. That's why they only judge appearance back here because the fifth judge has to see the same thing the first judge does. A lot of you guys have already messaged us for help. We're more than happy to help and give you tips or whatever help that you need. You can check us out at houndhogsbbqsupply.com. Uh, but yeah, that's it for us. As always, guys, we want to encourage you to turn those ideas into realities. Get out there and cook something new. We'll catch you next time. That was a good bite. Uh, that's a freaking good steak.